All right, we're gonna try something a little different today. Now, if you're watching this video, I want you to know I have a video on the best assault rifles in Fortnite Save the World. There's a big video on all of the ARs that is very, very unbiased, just math for the most part, and uh, I make it interesting. I don't actually show a lot of numbers, but I do come from a basis of math. In fact, I've got quite the spreadsheet that's gonna keep me on track today. But I've only ever actually made like one top 10 video and then I made an updated version of that list covering every weapon in Fortnite Save the World. And it frustrated a lot of people that I had a lot of tie breaks in that. And I have no apologies for that. A lot of weapons in this game got balanced out really, really well. I'm going to show a spreadsheet I've shown a lot on this channel and it's, well, I mean, they did a great update. I mean, in the 12.0 update, they rebalanced almost every weapon in the game and not every weapon is the same. Far from it. But there are a lot of tie breakers and I figured I'd have a little fun today. I want wanted to just cut the BS, say, okay, all right, I've made my big videos, I've made my guides, I've told you guys the truth, let's get into something a little more opinionated, all right? Now, I, I do have opinions, it happens, it happens, in fact, one of the weapons I have supercharged is Electro Shock Rifle, and I uh, just ran the numbers on our spreadsheet, and it sucks, <laughs> it's actually one of the lowest ranking ARs in the game, it has a huge headshot multiplier, and I come from a history of FPS games, which is probably why I never had a problem with this weapon, if you aim for the head, hey, it's actually pretty good, but this is not even going to be on the list it's a personal favorite but i just can't put it on here because if i'm going to publish beasts you know top 10 ars in fortnite save the world i want to come correct and uh i think i've got a good list now there are a couple of disclaimers i will be including a mythic scourge shocker i know and I will be including Founder's Weapons. I'm sorry. This is just something I, I want to include weapons that exist. I understand that nobody can get the Nocturno if you don't have the schematic. If you have it, you have it. Great. If you don't, you're going to be upset to see it later on. I, it exists. I can't pretend it doesn't. And the Founder's Drum Roll. Same deal. It exists. It's going to be on this list. And uh, that might upset some of you, but hey, there are eight other weapons that you can obtain that are on this list. And I, I, bear with me. Bear with me. All right. Let's start with the number 10 weapon. Now, I want to say that these are in no particular order, but that's false. There are going to be a couple of weapons that are basically the same, which is actually what we're starting with, but I wanted to start with the Siege Breaker. I honestly believe this is one of the best weapons in the game. Mathematically, it is a very B-tier weapon. It, it is on the lower end of ARs. Like I said, most of them are in a pretty short span, A and B. It's going to be great. You can use this even in the highest 160 power level zones. It's going to work. And the reason I'm ranking this on the list at all is is the fact that it's accessible you can get the siege breaker day one it's a super easy to get schematic and it works you can put a really typical crit build on this you can get affliction which is a great six perk i've even got three of these and i even busted out occasionally and this is a biased thing but hey it's my list not yours when i came over from battle royale it was nice to see a familiar weapon i started on battle royale and to see a weapon that was well, okay i think they actually just took out the scar doesn't even matter this was still a familiar weapon it was a friend you know and uh hey it, it does great now I will say, mathematically speaking, the Gravedigger is actually basically the same damage output as the Siege Breaker if you run similar perks on it. And I would put this number one if this was pure opinion, but I want to use math and come correct. The Gravedigger is on here because of bias, uh, but it is slightly better than the than the Siege Breaker, just barely. And it's a, a good it's a good mix between high damage, low fire rate, high mag size. It's a pretty cost effective weapon. And as I'm recording this, we are actually in the Halloween season where the Gravedigger, if I'm not mistaken, is still in the shop. But if you're watching this in the future, this weapon will not be available. And uh, yeah, it's gonna go away. But all event weapons do, and that's just sort of the truth of things. But yeah, the Gravedigger, just super fun, super iconic weapon. Needs a damage bonus. Bonus. I would love to see that in the game one day. Honestly, if this weapon got like a 15% damage bonus, which isn't even that much, they bump that base damage just a little bit, and this weapon jumps to like number three on my list easily. No problem, but that is just unfortunately not where it's at. All right. Number eight is a weapon that is here because of its math, not because of my personal opinion, and that is the Pain Train. It is a hard-hitting weapon. That is what it's supposed to be. Slow fire rate, high damage. The reason I don't like this weapon is the accuracy. If, you ever, if you've ever used the Pain Train, you know that it kind of becomes a bullet hose. And I'm even going to bring up the Wraith, which is a weapon that a lot of you guys are probably going to be surprised not to see, but it's got a really good crit damage, but low damage, low fire rate, bad combo. I don't care if it's critting every other shot. The math doesn't save it. It's just super inaccurate after the 10th shot and a lot of people say oh just moderate your shots fire slower uh no if i fire slower i'm losing a lot of damage you can go full auto on a lot of other ars and they're gonna keep their damage and the pain train 
and the Wraith are kind of in the same boat for me. If there was ever going to be a tie break to appease the people who don't have the drum roll of the Nocturno, the Wraith and the Pain Train would be in a very similar boat. The Wraith is heavily outdamaged by the Pain Train because of the sixth perk, but we can uh, <clears throat> save that conversation for, you know, their own videos linked to all of these down below. Uh, Affliction and crit rating and damage, all of these are very, very good on the Pain Train. It's really got a great uh, set of perk options but it's not quite super accurate, hence its placement on this list. Number seven is a for funsy pick. Uh, the Blizzard Blitzer. The Blizzard Blitzer is a weapon that is technically speaking, if you account for the time you spend reloading in between, you know, firing a weapon, the Blizzard Blitzer is the highest DPS AR in the game if you factor reloads. And even without factoring reloads, it is a hard hitting weapon, harder than you might know. The trick is, if you've ever used the Blizzard Blitzer, as the gameplay is probably showing, it fires a snowball projectile, which just cripples this weapon so bad. Its range is super short. You have to lead every shot. It's locked to water. Yeah, uh, they made a very, very good weapon and then just butchered it. <laughs> they made it so difficult to use this weapon that it's kind of a meme, but I wanted to put it on here just to remind everybody that this thing, if you can get consistent hits with this weapon, it's a very, very strong weapon. Number six on our list is the drum roll. Yeah, it, it just is kind of saved by Chaos Agent. I recently ran a double damage. Okay, let me actually explain. Three big things happened to this weapon. So first and foremost, they updated it. So a lot of the weapons in the game could either have mag, reload, weapon stability, uh, and durability. And a lot of those weapons got a damage perk as well, which is just a damage bonus. That's just a straight up plus. I personally kept mag size and reload on a lot of them because I feel like that utility is a really nice thing to have and I wouldn't want to play without it. That is still true today. However, they added Chaos Agent. I'm not going to get too far into it. I've made several videos on him. I'll try to link them below if I can remember to, but it makes so that if you throw a grenade or use any ability, but you're using a drum roll, so you're probably going to be using a soldier lead, throw a grenade or shockwave, you are going to get an instant reload. So I've just got a double Double damage crit rating crit damage on this thing and that makes it so much stronger this thing is so powerful and then the second update so that was the third you know you get the you get the damage bonus instead of the mag perk chaos agent exists and the third one is the sixth perk i didn't even factor this into my math and it was already stronger than the thrasher now the thrasher with the damage perk comes back on top but you know that's besides the point the sixth perk basically buffs your damage by 60 percent kind of that 60 percent stacks with the 20 percent water damage and whatever hero you're using and i do my math without low Outs, but uh, it's not exactly 60%, but it does stack up and just gives you more free damage just for shooting. And it's a really, really, really nice combination. So, yeah, Drum World takes the number six slot on my list. And I wanted to say this list was a lot harder to make than it would have been, but a couple years ago, a lot of our best ARs became SMGs. So, uh, <clears throat> that'll be its own video. All right, number five. This is kind of a utility pick. It's basically been that every single time I've talked about it, and that is the Bundle Bus. Now, Day to day, I never use this weapon. I'm not even sure if I have one crafted in my inventory. I don't use it. But I consider it a gateway weapon. It's one of the reasons I've ranked it high in the past before, and that's because it is so, so good for fighting the Storm King that it essentially unlocks the Storm King's Scourge. That's not going to surprise anybody that the Scourge is going to be high on my, on my list today, but I'm not saying you can't get the Scourge without the Bundle Bus, but my life was a lot easier using the Bundle Bus. And way back in the day, before the Bundle Bus got nerfed, it was very, very good in Frost Knight, and I attribute this weapon to our success. So it is just a really, really good high damage output AR in short burst. It's very good for specific events, and it's just not a weapon you want to forget. Day to day, I don't find it useful, but oh man, when you need it, you are glad you have it. So I wanted to rank it high up on the list to reflect that kind of history. And another weapon that is kind of an opinion pick, I don't know, the Floor Flusher has a six perk introduced with the Art Deco weapons, 44% bonus damage to specific elements. And uh, my face cam's covering it, and it's been covering most of these, but I mean, that's okay. It, it just does extra damage to the element. And so this one is nature, and it's doing 44% against water. Now, normally, this weapon ranks fairly low. It's a little bit above the Gravedigger, but it's not extremely impressive. However, when you are paired up against the element that it does that 44% extra to, you are doing more damage than the Scourge. It is literally like 300,000 DPS. I know I've, I've stayed away from numbers on this list, but 
Uh, the 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 siege breaker is about two hundred nine thousand. This thing's about three hundred and three thousand DPS. If you can kind of imagine the discrepancy there. So when you match up the element, the floor flusher is a monster. Very very strong weapon. So I never forget that. And this is always a fun weapon to pull out when I'm looking to try something a little different from the norm. Now third on our list has actually been bumped up yet again because of chaos agent. Now hexaw has always been a very strong weapon, but it's had a couple of drawbacks. First and foremost, it has a crit damage damage perk and no crit rating to be seen which means you are forced to run a fire rate damage build mathematically on paper that is okay however you're just firing more bullets to achieve the same damage that crits would have done for less ammunition used and what that means is you're shooting a lot faster spending a lot more ammo reloading a lot more often and it's just it's a it's a busy way to play the game however we don't need to run a reload perk on this anymore, which means we can stick an extra damage perk, because as I said, you throw a grenade with Chaos Agent in support, and you are right back into the action. Not to mention Affliction got a buff, which kind of buffs every weapon with Affliction, but Hacksaw takes advantage of it fantastically, because you can spray through a crowd hitting every enemy, and... Oh man, a weapon that was already topped here just is way, way better with Chaos Agent and support. That instant reload just gets you right back into the fight, and it has made this weapon a joy to use. So I am putting it in the number three slot. I am not even kidding around. Hacksaw is amazing. Now, these last two should surprise none of you. If you saw my video uh, <clears throat> popped up on the screen right there, Nocturno versus Scourge. I am finally deciding. I'm giving you an opinion. I think... In my opinion, that whole video gets into the, the pros and cons. I think the Nocturno is our number second pick here. And there are a couple of reasons. First and foremost, it's inaccessible. I wouldn't want to rank a weapon number one that you guys can't get. Mathematically, the Scourge is stronger. However, the, the Nocturno is a lot more affordable than the Scourge, which I don't care about. <laughs> I'm an endgame player. This is my list. So Nocturno is number two. And yeah, I mean, it's a monstrous weapon. Number two doesn't mean squat. It's a very, very, very good weapon. I use it all the time. It's fantastic. Uh, I've talked about this enough in the Nocturno versus Scourge video to keep it short right now. So I'm kind of just going to move on. I mean, you guys know the drill. You, you hit something with a Nocturno, you reload, they explode. Great crowd clearing. And believe it or not, it actually has the same DPS as the Siege Breaker. The only difference between the Nocturno and the siege breaker is the fact that it has an extra crit damage perk down here which can provide it a lot more extra damage and its sixth perk is specialized to the nocturno the uh, siege breaker cannot have that explosion once again i know my face cam is covering it but like i said these weapons are covered very heavily in their own videos and uh, i think we all kind of know the drill so yeah scourge number one ar in the game i can't imagine this surprises anybody this is a mythic weapon which means epic hand tailored this weapon to essentially be a perfect ar you never have to reload it hits really really hard with a fairly slow fire rate which means you can get a lot of damage out for not that much energy ammo used and it's not going to overheat as fast a really good six perk the best perk options crit rating double crit damage damage is about as good as you can ask for crit rating triple crit damage would be ideal but even uh even epic knows that's going to be a little overpowered element is locked to energy that is a huge limiting factor in a lot of cases but it honestly doesn't matter this weapon you switch off between targets will just annihilate everything that's in front of you and it makes for a phenomenal weapon so yeah i'm putting it in the number one slot again i cannot imagine that surprise anybody realistically speaking i knew the scourge and the nocturnal were going to be my top two weapons the trickiness of this video was picking the bottom bottom eight and what order they should go in this actually was a surprisingly difficult video to make but i don't think it's going to be the hardest one if i move on with this series and continue making these i think melees and smgs are going to be very tough there's a lot of diversity there and a lot of very strong weapons so uh hey comment down below if you guys enjoyed this stay tuned for more use code message to check out these videos take a ton of work thank you guys so much for watching and uh have a nice day <laughs> And then...